our strategy, which is really anchored on three pillars, and that is the frontline church partners. Those are the core groups that we, we target. And we have the children and the youth, and we also have the families. So the focus areas, uh, you can see them in those arrows there. They are all pointing in the same direction because we are talking about the same program participant or family. So there is the area of holistic development of children. Hence, that's why we, we, we were very happy to hear you addressing the issue of transformative holistic development. So there's a holistic development of the children and the youth. Then there's a frontline church partner empowerment, basically building their capacity to run these programs successfully. We have a very important area of child protection, and then there's household empowerment. So our pillars are the three groups there, the church, the children, and the families. And then we have other things that we call enablers that now help all these to come together and to hold together. Since Compassion began in 1980, we have been able to graduate over 70,000. Of, uh, of, of, of we have 70,000 alumni out there. Some of them doing very, very well indeed uh, in different parts of this country and in different parts of the world. So we had some challenges, and that was COVID-19 and the impact on the families and participants that we serve was uh, up to and including loss of household security, basically livelihoods and food security and shelter. A lot of them uh, found themselves without homes or food and uh, we needed to respond to some of those needs. Some of them were emergency, including even health. There are increased there was an increase in crime incidences, which also impacted our families, the families that we work with. There was a surge in youth-related vices. I think you remember uh, there were so many teenage pregnancies. There was a lot of dropouts. There was a lot of uh, engagement in drug, in drug use and abuse. Yeah, so those are some of the impacts, just to summarize. And of course, a disruption in our programming, the programs as we ran them in the various uh, centers and basically their lifestyle and uh, that was quite an impact but we adapted to the situation it always calls for agility because you never know what life will throw you at any one time so we needed to adapt so what did you do the first thing we established a COVID-19 response task force that was now going to focus their efforts in responding to this one of the things was to account, because now the government had already issued a directive that, uh, <laughs> about social distancing, about people not gathering together. But because we are a child-focused organization and their protection and their well-being is one of our core mandate, we needed to know. So one of our immediate things was to account for all the beneficiaries to establish their status, uh, the status of their well-being and that of their families so that we would know how they're doing and respond effectively to their needs. With limited access to beneficiaries and programming activities, we narrowed our programming focus to four key areas. The first one was in the area of health, because again, COVID-19 was, was a health issue. Then the issue of child protection. There was a lot of uh, abuse and uh, it's called what? Mal maltreatment of, of children and youth by adults and even amongst themselves. So we also stepped up our child protection efforts. And then there was the issue of household security in terms of food, in terms of rent, in terms of you know uh, many other needs that they may have. And then later on after schools were opened, uh, we had to think about education. And uh, because again, some of them had lost and a number of them had also dropped out uh, as we all know and we've had in the, in, the, in the media. So we adapted our strategies to deliver pr uh, programming in various ways uh, in alignment with COVID-19 protocols. We moved from now center-based at the church to home-based programming. So the staff at the centers and the committees and the, and the pastors in those local churches, they actually went to minister to the children and the youth in their homes in small groups, in the villages. And then 
for us to continue our engagements and connection with the churches, we, of course, had to adapt to virtual engagements through uh, forums like Zoom and others, and uh, teleconferencing and others, because we needed to continue engaging and to see how to best support uh, the ministry work that is going on between uh, Compassion and, and the churches. A major innovation at that time uh, for us is that we introduced direct cash transfers. Even that one child, the power of one, is very important. One can change the whole world. We all remember the story of Hitler. <laughs> yeah, One depraved mind, he messed up millions of people. So that one soul can also be our hope. Jesus came as one person and changed the history and the destiny of, of humankind. And then our strategy in terms of child protection is active prevention and immediate response. So all our activities, whatever we shall do in this space of child protection is around and about preventing actively, educating, putting policies in place, monitoring uh, how those are going, training the parents, training the children, engaging in policy forums for children, working with the judiciary, working with people who are talking about children in, the, in, in conflict with the law. All those things are part of our active prevention. But should it happen then, there is need for immediate response, for healing, for psychological, so, psychosocial support, for restoration of these, of these lives. <laughs>